Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and I am filming this review for the second time. No idea what happened, but my camera stopped recording about one minute into the review and I didn't realise, so I'm filming this again. If I'm a little bit low energy, that's why, but it's fine, it is what it is. Today I'm going to be doing a review of The Will of the Many by James Islington. This is a book that when I came into it, I was a little bit nervous because it's one of those books that had a lot of high expectations attached to it. Everybody was raving about it when it first came out. And I actually purposefully decided to delay my reading of it until the hype had died down a little so that I could, you know, maybe temper my expectations a little bit. And I definitely think that was the right thing to do. I think I waited about a year to read it maybe just a bit under a year, I can't remember the exact date that it came out. You know, I wanted to make sure that I didn't come into this with particularly high expectations because if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you will know that I have historically had very bad experiences with hyped books on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the different social media channels. So I did come into this with pretty low expectations. Overall, I have to say I had a really fun time. This is one of those books that I was just addicted to and I loved every moment that I spent reading it. It's quite a long book. I think it's about six, 700 pages in the paperback. I read it on my Kindle so I, and I can't remember the exact page count, but it's quite a long book. This sort of length would normally take me about 10 days probably, given that I generally only read in the evenings, but I ended up reading this uh, over five days. Admittedly, part of that was over the weekend, but I just wanted to finish it because I wanted to know what happened at the end of the book. It was that fun to read. This is one of those books where I can, I would describe it as popcorn fiction. And by popcorn fiction, I mean you just sit down, you enjoy the ride and you have a lot of fun with it. But I would say this is well written popcorn fiction and I'll go into that in a second as to why it's well written. But I just thought it was really fun. I like the characters. I like the world building. I like the setting. I enjoyed a lot about it. And with that in mind, let me give you a very brief summary of what this book is about. We are essentially following our main character who is in an orphanage at the start of the book. He essentially gets chosen to take part in a series of games at an academy in order to be able to fulfill a mission for his adoptive father. And that's what I'm going to say, because this is one of these books that I think you should go into it with pretty low expectations. I didn't even know that when I first went into it. The only thing that I knew about it is there was an academic setting, which I do quite like when it's done well. But I didn't even know there was, you know, uh, other elements to it. I think the best thing to do when going into this sort of story is to kind of not read anything about it because it just makes it a lot more enjoyable to dive into. So with that in mind, let's jump into what I really enjoyed about this book. Uh, I think the first thing that I will say is that, is that the writing is very solid. Islington gets his point across. He's not overly descriptive with his words, which I like and I think which needs to be the case with this sort of story, given that it's so fast paced. And I think it's one of those books that is very easy to read and just get through in a relatively short amount of time. And it lends itself to the overall style of this story. It has really, really good pacing. Uh, there was not one moment where I was bored. There was not mo one moment where my attention was dwindling. I was completely enraptured by the story because it is paced extraordinarily well. There is not one moment where nothing is happening. Even the quiet moments, which I love, between like two characters or three characters talking about stuff, you know it's important, you know it carries weight, and that is the sort of book that I love. I really don't like it when books are paced in a way where there's lots of action, then there's lots of quiet moments, then there's lots of action, then there's lots of quiet moments. I don't like that. I like it when it's much more interwoven together, and Islington definitely does that in this book. I really hope this continues to be the case in the next two books in this trilogy. Uh, I have faith in James Islington, but I, I really liked it and I thought it was done really, really, really well in this book. The next thing that I will talk about is the world building. I think the world building is pretty solid in this book. I wouldn't say it's life changing, but that being said, you know, we are pretty much in like two areas in this entire book, maybe three areas in this entire book. And even then we're in really like one main area for the majority of the book. So there doesn't need to be tons of world building. Uh, I am very curious to see how that develops in the next two books, especially in the next book, given that the world will hopefully open out, given the way that the book ended. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like the most amazing world building, but at the same time, it doesn't really need to be given that we're in one location for the majority of the story. It does what it needs to do. It paints a picture of what the different places look like and it uh, gives a good image to the reader as to where we are. 
Next up, let's talk about characters. There are a lot of characters in this book that I really like, and so I'm really excited to see how they continue to develop. I'll talk about three or four now, maybe five. Uh, so the first character we have is our main character, Viz. Viz, as I mentioned, is an orphan and he essentially gets adopted by a very powerful man and has to carry out a mission for him whilst being at this academy and he's one of those characters I wasn't really that bothered by him he just seemed a bit bland but then as the book progressed and we get a little bit more depth to this character I actually really started to like him. Viz is your classic kind of hero he's very intelligent very bright he has the capacity to commit a lot of good but he also has the capacity to commit bad and we're always reading his inner monologue on that struggle and I think it's really interesting to see from and it's really interesting to kind of think about from a moral and ethical perspective which I'll come into more when I talk when I talk more about the thematic work but he's one of those characters that it's not necessarily clear where his journey is going to be right now where we are at the start of the story it could go one of two ways and i'm very very excited to see where it goes i hope islington does the road less traveled i don't think he will and that's fine but uh either way i'm excited to see where it kind of goes and i like this i i kind of i was backing him by the end of it i wanted him to win i wanted him to be able to kind of fulfill his destiny in a way at the academy and I feel like we're always rooting for him which is something that you want for your main character. He is our only POV as well so it's even more important that we're rooting for him and we definitely do throughout the duration of the story. Next up I'm going to talk about Olsiska Telemus. Telemus is the guy who adopts Viz at the start of the book and he is one of my favourite character types, very intelligent, very bright, quite quiet, quite reserved but you know his brain is ticking away, assessing the landscape, assessing the different people involved and I love that sort of character. I just think he's one of those people that carries a lot of power but not necessarily by shouting and screaming and by being arrogant. It's, it's an inner confidence that I really enjoy in my favourite character types. And uh, we definitely see that in Telemus. Telemus is a character that I actually really want to get to know more, but I just don't think we will because this isn't his story necessarily. But I would love like a prequel book about Telemus and uh, James Islington, if you're reading this, please consider it because I would 100% I would read that because he's such a compelling individual. And I feel like there's a lot of answers that we could get to him. I just don't think we're necessarily going to get again because this isn't, isn't necessarily his story. Really cool character, really interested to see where he goes and I really hope we get more screen time with him. Next up, I'm going to quickly run through these ones. We have Lanistia. Lanistia is a, a really great character. She's the type of female character that I really like. She has a lot of inner strength. She is very physically strong, but at the same time, you can see there's a lot of vulnerability and emotion there that's had to be kind of packaged away and uncompartmentalized. But as she begins to open up throughout the story, we really get a sense of her principles, her morals. And the fact that she is one of those people who is willing to fight for a cause, but also not at the cost of her own identity, which I love. We don't really see that a lot in fantasy, but I really love that uh, as a concept, as a character trait. And uh, I think she really does embody that. Then we have Viridius. Viridius is kind of uh, shown to be one of the potential villains in this story. And I, again, he's quite similar to Telemus, actually. Very smart, very intelligent, very observant, quite quiet, quietly confident. And I think, again, this is a character that we're barely scraping the surface on. And I'm really, really curious to see where we go with him. And then the last character that I'm going to mention is Caldus. Caldus was actually probably my favourite character in this book. He's just, again... You, you can see a common theme, quiet, very intelligent, uh, very observant, has a good sense of like people's temperament. Love the moments between him and Viz as well. They have a lot of banter, lots of like, you know, you see their friendship developing and it's a really heartwarming thing to observe. There is a really great secondary cast characters. There's some characters that I missed out, but just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through them. But there is a really great secondary cast characters. We know who they are. We know where they're from. We know why they're doing what they're doing, what their motivations are. I really like that. I really love having like a rich secondary cast of characters. And we definitely get that in this book and in this series so far. So now let's move on to thematic work. So there is some kind of more intimate thematic work as it relates to Viz, you know, we're seeing his him struggle between his past and his present, 
between, you know, kind of the life that he had before he became an orphan, but then also the life that he, the kind of trajectory that he is on now. And I think that's really interesting to see. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because I don't want to spoil. But then there's also kind of him trying to figure out who he is and what sort of man he wants to be, what sort of person he wants to be, and him posing questions to himself about the sort of society that he wants to live in. And that brings me on to the more macro themes, which like a lot of sci-fi and fantasy books, you know, there is very much a hierarchy in this world. It's quite akin to, you know, Hunger Games and Red Rising, where there is literally like a tiering of people and the higher you go up, the more power and I guess independence you have to be able to do things the way that you want to do them. And as always, the majority of people are at the bottom. And as you go up that totem pole, there are less and less people. So it is very much a society where there is a lot of inequality and inequity, a lot of injustice, and the ruling class are essentially only serving themselves and don't really care about the average lay person. And that, that is something that I think is quite overdone in sci-fi and fantasy, but I think in this book it's done quite well. I think it's a slightly different take on it, which I always enjoy. And I think Islington does a good job of capturing the key issues and I'm really curious to see where that goes in the following two books. The only thing that I didn't like about this book, only thing that stopped me from giving it a five out of five, and that was the fact that I found it to be a little bit predictable sometimes. The good side of it being very fast paced is that there are lots of twists and turns, and there are a few that I didn't see, there were maybe like one or two that I didn't see coming and that were done very well. But there were three or four big twists that happened that I definitely did see coming very early on. And you know what? I didn't actually hate that fact in this book because I just enjoyed the ride so much. But I would like to be surprised in the next book. I would like for us to be taken maybe in a slightly different direction, which I think we probably will be given how the book ended. But I would like to be surprised a bit more. And I really hope Islington does employ some more twists and turns as the series progresses, because I think there's a lot of places where he could take it that would be very different to the typical fantasy that we get these days. That was my only critique. So for that reason, I did give this book a 4.5 stars. I rated this book a 4.5 because I enjoyed it so much as I was reading it. I just, I was, I felt like I was lost in this world. It's very rare for me to want to pick up book two in a series immediately. It's only happened with a handful of series and this was one of them. Unfortunately, the book is not out yet. So I have to wait like everybody else, probably towards the end of this year, it's going to come out but it was just so good. It was so fun. And it was it was pretty well written as well. I wouldn't say the writing was incredible, like it blew me away, but it did what it needed to do to get the story across and the characters' motivations across and the world across. And to be honest with you, that's all I can expect from an author. And I really think Islington really created something that is just a really, really fun time that has the potential to become a new favourite series for me. I, and I, I, I caveat potential quite a lot because I've said that before and that's not happened, unfortunately. <laughs> but I think if this is going to go in the direction that I really want it or hope it to, and there's not one direction that I'm necessarily fixed on, but if it goes in kind of a very certain way and it continues to be quite dark, which this book is definitely quite dark in places, then I think this could definitely become a favourite series and I'm very excited to see it play out. So there we have it. Uh, a lot of people have read this book, so let me know your thoughts below. The majority of people that I've seen love this book. Uh, I'm definitely intrigued to hear your thoughts as well, like what were your favourite parts about it. I'm also very interested to hear from people who didn't like this book. I did read a few negative reviews once I finished the book and you know, some of it I could kind of understand, some of it I kind of disagreed with, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts too. And yeah, let's take the conversation down below and I will see you there. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, especially because I did have to film it a second time. That would be really kind if you did give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, folks. Stay safe, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.